our Savior, our day long. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let's go quickly to our affirmations and let's get into scripture. So happy to have you here on a beautiful Sunday morning. Those of you that are celebrating your birthdays and your anniversaries, we are happy to have you here. Those of you here to dedicate your kids, we are glad to join you in your moments of joy and celebration. But we do our affirmations real quickly. Um, those of you that have been able to memorize your affirmation, um, we can do it without you looking at it. Um, <laughs> I was talking to a gentleman and he said, so maybe um, you've, not, you've not been able to memorize because, uh, but, but it's on the board. Let's do it together. I rely totally on the grace of God this year. By his grace, growth in my spirituality, growth in my business, growth in my emotions, growth in my thinking, Growth in, growth in my personal life, growth in favor and scope of influence. My best days are ahead of me. 2023 is surely my year of growth, and I am a walking. And come on, if you believe that, put your hands together. Amen. Let it be an affirmation that reverberates through your soul. Who want you to hammer it down until your soul harmonizes with the words that you see um, um, in test. If you came with your Bibles, could you please lift it up with me as we, we go before him again. Say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I'll go where it says I can go. I will achieve what it says I can achieve. I'll be what it says I can be. Slap your chest and say, I am a believer. Come on, do it again. Say, I am a believer. I'm excited to invite your attention and hearts to the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15. And also to the book of Romans, chapter number 12. Romans, chapter number 12. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15. Romans chapter number 12. Uh, sorry, right, yeah. Romans chapter, chapter number 12, St. Louis Gospel, chapter number 15. Um, St. Louis Gospel 15 talks about the lost and found. Um, from the lost sheep to the lost coin and to the lost son. But from the verse number 11, you will find, I believe, if your Bible is open to St. Louis Gospel, chapter number 15, from the verse number 11, you should read something like this. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And of many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance through or with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fame, and filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many high servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Romans chapter number 12. From the verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. A sacrifice that is holy. A sacrifice that is acceptable unto God. In case you are wondering, that is your reasonable service. The verse number two, and be not conformed to this world. 
but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Heavenly Father, we know the grass will wither, the flower will fade, but your word will abide forever. We pray that in this time that you've given to us, you give us a word that works. Anoint these lips of clay and make it an instrument of a blessing to somebody. Speak to me. Speak through me. Speak for me. That the excellency of the power be of you. At the end of the day, no flesh can glory. Your church will be edified. You will be glorified. In the name of the one who rules, reigns, and has regency, Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God, we have prayed. Amen. I want you to look for seven people and tell them I've made up my mind. Look at somebody and tell the person, I, I've made up my mind. I've made up my mind. Actually, mental stability is something that is very important if you are going to do well and thrive in anything that you are doing. Mental stability. When we started this year, of course, this year had been our year of growth. We have journeyed through um, the planes of spiritual growth. And we've spoken about how a man is going to grow spiritually. Why it is important to find your spiritual compass. And develop your spiritual nature or your spirit man so that you'll be more impactful in the land of the living. Um, I had other pastors coming through like Pastor Kobe who had spoken about financial growth and all of that. But I started again with mental growth or growing in your thinking. And then I believe for me last week, um, um, Apostle Akomia came and it was a beautiful service and I loved it. Although I, um, we, we did not do continue with mental growth, there are certain things that I still believe he had mentioned that will also grow your thinking and help you to appreciate that you can think differently to get the right results. Actually, you cannot be thinking after the same pattern and order and expect a new or a different result. It doesn't happen. So we started on that tangent and today we are still continuing. And I want to start off by the story that we just read in the book of St. Luke's Gospel, chapter number 15. The Bible says that a man had two sons. Two sons. Ages undisclosed, but two sons. They were matured. They were above 18, I believe. And because of that, they were able to go to the father. One of them, the youngest, was able to go to the father and said, and said to the father, um, um, Dad, I know you have worked hard, um, but what is in your hard work, labor or hard work for me? Will you be able to split everything that you've made for yourself so that I can have my portion? I don't want to fight my big brother when you die. I want to have everything that is due me now. I can't wait for you to die. I believe that if it was to be an Ashanti man, the boy would have lost every inheritance. Because it's almost like saying, I want you to die. Just die quickly. Hurry up and die so I can have my inheritance. Because you don't go to your daddy and that's not yours. That's your dad's labor. So those of you that are hiding under what your fathers have done, quit that. Your father lived his life. I mean, there are people who go and they want to propose to a girl and they start with their father's name. I'm the son of. And so who are you? You know, I'm the son of that and I'm the daughter of that and, and, and I'm a, my, my dad, my dad, my dad. You are being a joke of a man. So your dad was able to achieve that. What have you been able to achieve? And we have to raise our people and our kids to know that what we get is not theirs. In the same way, what they have is not ours. Because the good man leaves inheritance. Do not give him, he leaves it. It means that it is only after the demise of the testator 
that a will can be enforced. Until you are dead, they are not supposed to. But the boy had the guts and the, and the courage and the confidence. I don't know how the dad was raising them in the house, but was able to go to the father. I know that if it was my father, night would have fallen very quickly for you. The, the skies would turn blue black. Because some, you feel something around your eye area. <laughs> you know that a man visited you. <laughs> Quite remember when I was young, my father gave me a knock. And I, 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 couldn't, I think that is even what impeded my... <laughs> the knock was heavy. I believe that it, <laughs> it contributed to my vertical impairment. I could have been very, my father was tall, of course, he's late, but my father was tall. I could have become tall, but I remember one time, I don't know what I did, but there was something heavy. I believe that if I had gone to my dad to say that, dad, whatever you have earned, give me half, split it so I can have mine. I believe I would have felt something bigger. So I, I'm not sure how this boy was raised, but he was able to go to the dad and said to dad that dad, whatever you have labored for, I want to split. A split. Give me my portion. The father gave them, called the two boys, gave them everything, gave them, you have that, you have that. And after a while, after they have gotten what he had gotten, what he had asked for, he left. And that happens to be the problem with a lot of people who happen to be in the common world of faith as Christians. We go to God and we say, God, give me this. God, give me that. And after God has given you the marriage or the children or the, the business or whatever you had asked God for. In a little while, after a short while, you gather everything God has given to you and you stray far away into a far country. You have many people who... Hitherto, they were very consistent. Hitherto, they were very, uh, they were trustworthy. God could count on them. Until what they were, what they had asked of God were given to them. After God had given them what they had prayed for, what they had asked for, what they had labored for, they were tarrying in prayer, fasting and praying. Until they got to a time that they knew that, okay, no, we needed more. We, we can't be fasting and praying anymore. I, I'm tired. I've fasted. God has given me all of that. And so, so now it is even as if, if you are now going to do the things that the person was doing, they think you are wasting your time. It means that the person has strayed into a far country. After they have been blessed by God, after they have experienced the joys and the comfort and the blessings that come from God, after God had opened the door, made a way for them, they stray into a far country. The Bible says this boy had taken everything, moved into a far country, and after he had moved to a far country, he spent all that he had through riotous living. He wasted all his substance. This is not just his money. And sometimes you read the test and you might think that he was talking about only money. No, the substance was everything in him, the totality of his being, his dignity, his integrity, his affluence, his influence, everything that he had, he had wasted all. It means that if you stray from from God, it is likely you're going to lose your dignity, your integrity, and everything that you have. It's just a matter of time. You might think you have everything still intact, but it's just a matter of time. If you stray away from God, you will lose everything God gave you because anything given by God can only be sustained by God. God cannot give you something that you can use a human mechanism to sustain it. If anything is God giving, is God maintained. Whatever is God giving, is God maintained. If God gives you a marriage, it takes God to maintain it. If God gives you a child, it takes God to sustain it. If God gives you a job, it takes God to sustain it. Whatever is God giving, is God sustained. And so you cannot get something from God and use another platform, medium or means to sustain what God has given to you. It doesn't work that way. The man had left Spent all that he had through riotous living. 
there was a sad part of the story before we even get into um, what I want to share with you. There is a sad part of the story. The Bible says after he had spent all that he had, there was nobody there to help him. He spent it with people. But when he had lost everything, there was nobody there for him. That is why if you are alive and if you are able, you are agile, you have all the things, the dexterity, the agility, the, the contacts, the connections, and you have your things right, and you're doing things in the land of the living, that is why you should always pray that, Lord, do not let me come down. Because you see, they are only around you because of where you are. Your position, your influence, your affluence, there are people who are around you because they know God has lifted you, and in your lights, they will see light. If you come down, they will desert you, they will abandon you. Somebody said they will drop you like a bad habit they will leave you there all by yourself i pray for you that anything that will cause you to come down will never locate you but god will keep you up there may you maintain the status the levels and then the realms god has placed you in whatever will bring you down may god extricate you from it this guy had company spending the money had company Boozing had company. Going to the brothel had company. Going on the dating site had company. Throwing parties, oh, they were there. Having a beach party, oh, they were there. Pool party, oh, they were there. They had arranged for people to even come from afar so that they could patronize. In the joy and the fun of the time. They were all there until he got broke. If you don't manage your life well. And you lose what God has placed in your hands. I can tell you that even the people you think love you. They will leave you real quick. You won't even know when they left. Because sometimes when life becomes very hot, even your own shadow will abandon you. Oh, you are not very scientific. You would have corroborated my story. Because if you have done science, when the sun at a certain degree and you are in the sun, you won't find your shadow. Even your own shadow will leave you. When the sun is at its peak, you won't even find shadow. No shadow. No shadow. You think the people who are around you and they are embracing you and showing you all of that, they will be there for you. They come to you. They love you now because of the things that they know happen to be around you. You have to be smarter than that. Very few people love for no reason. And the only people who are able to love for no reason are God men. The regenerated man. If the person is not regenerated, every love is conditioned. If the person is not a regenerated soul, every love is conditioned. If you break some lines... You will violate the principle of love there. And the person will go. Whilst the person has money. There were, there were people there. Whilst the boy was still having money and influence. They were there to celebrate with him. That is to tell you that you shouldn't think that every embrace is a demonstration of love. You should never come to a place where your mind is ticking and telling you that you know what, the guy smiled and so he's in love with me. You shouldn't be thinking the one that sent you the test or your chop kiss really meant. You know, <laughs> send you the emojis and, and kisses emojis and oh, 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 look at, oh, no. It is not every embrace 
That is the embrace of love and affection and empathy. Sometimes the kiss can be the kiss of the devil, the kiss of death. It can be like Jet Li did that movie, The Kiss of the Dragon. It can be something that is going to take you out. If Jesus was betrayed with a kiss, what makes you think that one kiss in you loves you? If the Messiah, so, 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 and you don't love me and you don't hug me and you don't, you'll be hugged and loved, kissed on and kissed that, and yet still be betrayed. Why? Because a lot of the things are conditioned. Now, these guys show this boy all of that. Loves and kisses and roses and hugs and all of that. They gave him all the love that he could, they could give him. And yet, when he lost everything, the Bible says, they all abandoned him. Uh, but sometimes, anytime people leave you, it is also an opportunity for God to show up in your life. I don't know who have been left alone, deserted and abandoned, but I came to tell you that sometimes rejection from men is a direction from God. That sometimes when men are leaving your space, it is just introducing a place where God can occupy that loss. I pray for you that may God show up in your life and even in the dark places of your life, may God show Show up. May God show up. Because sometimes you are rejected, but rejection is not always a bad thing. Rejection is not always a bad thing. Sometimes rejection is to bring you direction. Sometimes rejection is to bring you into a place of alignment with the purposes of God. Because as long as they are with you, you might never hear God. As long as they are with you. As long as your life is shrouded in that noise and noisy environment. It is likely when God is speaking, his still small voice cannot be heard. So sometimes God allows people to reject you so that when everything comes together, you can say the stone that the builders rejected have become the chief cornerstone. Sometimes God allows certain things to happen so that when it is done, you can say this is the doing of the Lord and it is marvelous in our sight sometimes God allows certain things to happen so that no flesh can glory so that God will share his glory with nobody I don't know maybe you have been rejected but it was God that is lifting you up may the Lord lift somebody up is there anybody under the sound of my voice who is believing God for a turnaround may God face your life and turn is a man with a father through his own decisions left the comfort zones that he had joined himself to a citizen of that country spent all he had through riotous living there was no food there was famine, there was hunger, there was thirst, there was deprivation, there was lack. He was confused and now he just had to tell himself, I have to survive. Most of us, we have got into a place where we are merely surviving. Because we have not got into the place where we have realized that the one who made us will not reject us. So we are surviving. You are living substandard. You are living a life that is subservient to what God will originally intend or want you to have. So this man, whilst he was eating the food of the pigs, he was just dining with the pigs. And he was eating their husk. Husk, no protein. He was only doing kabo. So in no time, he will be malnourished. But that was his life. And you read the test and something beautiful happens. The Bible says that and one day he came to himself. Nobody told him. Because oftentimes what people tell you, you might not even take it until you tell yourself. 
until you come to yourself. Because oftentimes when people are telling you things, you might think they are bothering you, they are worrying you, they are doing too much, or they are becoming too much, or they are saying too much. But the Bible did not say an apostle went to evangelize to him. It was not the work of any ecclesiastical order. That was not the work of any episcopal prison. There was not nothing done by a clergy. No cleric had gone to him and said to him, Thus seeth the Lord. No prophet had gone to him. No apostle had visited him. No bishop, no pastor, no teacher, no evangelist. No prophet had gone to him and said, I have seen a vision your father is looking for. Nobody. The Bible says, and the man came to himself. But the critical existential ontological question that you might have to ask yourself at that point is where was himself when he was finding himself and couldn't find himself until he came to himself because the man was himself with his father when he went into the far country he was himself but he came by himself he was alone but when he was by himself the bible says he came to himself so which of the cells was lost and which was found because it was himself all through but he still came to himself. Because you see, you are never yourself until you are walking in the perfect will of the father. So anything subservient to the perfect will of your father is not the real you. What is the father's will for you? Is that you shall be the head and not the tail. That is the will of my father. I shall be above and not beneath. That is the will of my father. I shall remain on top and never come down. That is the will of my father. I am anointed. That is the will of my father. Thou anointest my head with oil. That my cap runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of that is that is the will of my father the will of my father concerning my life is that a thousand shall follow my left ten thousand shall follow my right can i talk to somebody like i feel it a thousand shall follow my left Ten thousand shall fall on my right. A shall. Oh, come near me. You are never yourself until you discover that your true self is in God's self. Because you were out of him. The will, the purpose is whatever you become is in him. And so you can never find purpose outside him. Because... The purpose for which you came into this world is in him. In him, all things consist. So everything about you is in him. When you find, you try to find yourself outside of him, you'll be lost in translation. The only time a man can find true meaning, definition, and purpose for his life is when he finds himself in God. And he came to himself what happened the light bulb came on he realized that he was bigger than where he was he realized that his father had given him more than he was enjoying he realized that the things that god had placed on him they were bigger than what he was experiencing he came to himself and then he began to say he said how many of my father's servants have food enough to spare and i'm here dying from hunger it was not an apostolic decree it was not an apostle's creed it was not a prophetic declaration no the man realized that there was something in him and there was something on him and there was something about him that he had to now find again and he found that it was in the father's house if you are in the father jesus said i and the father are one if you are in the father whatever the father has belongs to you whatever the father has belongs to the son so that was how he was thinking if i'm in the, my father's house even though i have lost everything I will not eat with pigs. But how did the boy go there? He came to himself. You see, the problem is that most of us are not coming to ourselves. Cognitively, he was able to process that this is not where I am supposed to be. The length of time you spend in life's prison is very subjective. There is no objective twist to the length of time a man will spend in life's prison. In life's prison, 
Everything there is subjective and is subjected to your cognitive ability. Uh, abilities and processes is subjected to your thinking your mindset your mentality is subjected to how you think about life not how life thinks about you let me rewind and help you the man came to himself so he left himself discovered that that wasn't the self realized that there was a better self and migrated from where he was to the proper self. All those things were happening, not physically, externally. They were happening in the mind. Where the devil has been fighting you is not out there. The devil doesn't fight you with ballistic missiles, weapons of mass destruction. He doesn't fight you with a biological weapon. He doesn't fight you with any of that. Every battle that you have ever been fighting has always been mental. God knows that if anything controls your mind, it controls your being. And that's why he wants you to protect your mind. The devil knows that if he is able to get into your mind, you will destroy yourself. So that is all that he, he targets every time. The devil is always after your mind. He came to himself. It's mental. He came to himself when he realized that even if I have done things that are not right, my father will not reject me. Mental. I will not allow anybody to condemn me. It's mental. You know, when he was going back, he did not think about the brother. And I'll show you why. This thing to do with our faith is not brother-sister affair. It's a father-child affair. So somebody might be a brother with you in church and not like you. It doesn't matter. Their opinions, a sister, it doesn't matter. Because it's between me and my father. It's me and my father. It's not me and my brother. It's not me and my sister. It's me and my father. I just came to just announce to somebody real quick that made the relationship between you and your father rather stand tall in all your thinking that whenever you are about to do something you not think about what another person will say or do this boy never even considered the opinion of the the, the older or the big brother never read your test he never said hey my brother is there my brother still has substance because brothers are born for adversity read your bible People feel that if they are from the same womb with you, went to the same school with you. Haven't you heard? We, we are all in school together. I don't know. Why you know you. People think that if they, they are your colleagues, you guys should suffer the same fate. That if they are hungry, you should be hungry. If they are crying, you should be crying. But when you see, you see, when you come to yourself, you realize that all of those people, they don't matter. It's between you and your father. I just pray that whatever Whatever the father has for you i wish like prophesying to about 27 of you whatever the father has for you may it rest on your life irrespective of the opinions of men may god's word come true for you he came to himself and said i'll go back to my father come to yourself come to yourself tap somebody and tell the person come to yourself no, no, no. Tell somebody, come to yourself. You are bigger than where you are. Come to yourself. You are stronger than who you think you are. Come to yourself. You are lifted than where you think you are. Come to yourself. Tell somebody, you are bigger. You are more anointed. You are blessed. You are, you are lifted. Come to yourself. Stop looking down on who you are. Come to yourself. Look down on yourself, you... You don't see where God is sending you to. You don't appreciate the depths, the, the magnitude of blessing on your life. So you look down on yourself. When Lodina was singing, blessed assurance. And all of you are lifting your hands. Enjoying the sweet melody from a pure vessel. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Singing that song. You were happy. Perfect submission, perfect delight. You have submitted perfectly. 
You are delighted. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all day. You, you were happy talking about it. But check the lyrics of the songs well. If there is glory divine, he gives you a foretaste. Foretaste is a teaser. That's not the main thing. Listen, child of God. I'm trying to compress something for you, but my, I'm racing against time. The father was available never moved places the child did so God has always been there waiting we move God has never moved from you you moved from him I mean sometimes you hear people and in their theological ignorance will sound like and I found God are you crazy? When I found God, he was never lost. You were. It's rather when God found you. Not when you found him. He's always been there. The boy did not go and look for the father's new address. It was the same address. He went back to the father. The father received him. So the difference, the distance between his hunger and his satisfaction was a mind change. He just had to change his mind that where I am is not good. You have to have a changed mind. You have to change your mind. Not just about life but about God and about how you think about yourself let me tell you this if you want to change your life you don't change your clothing it's not I mean you have to have a very high level of um, external appreciation have what they call external locus of control and think that value is extrinsic. To think that your clothing depicts your value. There are people who think that if, if you dress like this and you wear a loop shoe or a Dior shoe or you are carrying a Hermes bag or you, that's what makes you valuable. That's very extrinsic. Real value is intrinsic. Where you are, not even holding a bag, but you have confidence than one that is holding one. You know why? Because you know that greater is he who is in you. So maybe I, I don't have a car. I drive a Lexidis Benz. You know Lexidis Benz? When your legs are the Cedis Benz. You drive a Lexedes Benz, not a Mercedes, a Lexedes Benz. And you, you ride your Lexedes Benz with style. Because your value is not in the aesthetics. Your value is intrinsic. So if you want to change your life, you don't buy new clothes. You've bought, you've bought too much. That now you, you, you have clutter in your house. Some of you have clothes you don't even wear. Look at me directly. Because if you look on your left or your right, your neighbor will think you are talking. You are just, but, but look at me. You have shoes you haven't worn. You have clothes you, you, you have too much. And you keep buying. Every wedding, you want a new bag. Every day, you want a new engagement. You want everything. In your language, recycling is not part. You don't know how to recycle. 
So you, you are spending all your money on clothing because you think it will bring you value. If you want your life to change, you don't change your wardrobe. You don't change your car. You change your mindset. You change your mind. The body can only go where the mind has visited. The body can only go where the mind has been. Read your test. Then Paul spiced it up and said, do not be conformed to this world. The word used there simply means do not live or fashion your life after the patterns of this world. That is supposed to mean that if a Kufuato is messing up, a president, your mind is not the word. If, if Mahama messed up, that's not your mind. If they are messing up and fighting, your life is not fashioned after that. Because in the times of scarcity in some nations, God still raised men in their, those same nations. And so let this mind be in you. Who told you that God will not, cannot lift you up because some people are messing up? It depends on the economy you choose to live in. You can choose to live in Mahama Setepe, that's the name, right? Setepe. Setepe. You can live in Mahama Setepe economy or Nanado Ufoyata economy. You can also choose that I don't live by any of the standards of this economy. I live by the heaven's economy. My mind is made up. I've, I've changed my mind. So that whilst there is darkness in Egypt, there can be light in my Goshen. You, you have a changed... So it's amazing. We are saying, I think the Ghana is going to make hot. Going to make hot. Things make wild. In this same hot, wild state, there are people... Just look at me and just smile. I don't, <laughs> you, you are, I'm talking to somebody. You, you, you are saying Ghana is hard because your rent is aspiring and you are, you are 5,000 cities shy. And because of that, Ghana is hot. Somebody just bought a car of $250,000 for their no wife, girlfriend. You are saying Ghana is hot. Somebody even told somebody that don't work. I'll give you money every month. This, this work that you have come for, this national service, you are, you are too big. Don't do national service again. Stay at home. I will pay. Whatever you are being given as national service, I'll triple it. And stay at home. And be a caregiver, a service provider. Just stay. And you are saying Ghana, Ghana is hard. I, I'll give you a car. You said Ghana is hard. I, I, I will get you accommodation. So Ghana is hard. No, 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 Ghana is hard. Where do you want to go for vacation? I'll still take. So in this same economy. Whilst you are gnashing your teeth, others are counting their teeth. Some are excited. What I mean is that it's all a mindset. Mindset. Paul said, if you want transformation, it's not in speaking in tongues. Romans chapter 12. That's what you read. It's not in holding your waist like some of the ladies do. There was a time many years ago, we went to the mountain to pray. And a lady was praying mountains. I'm telling you, this was a, the last time I went there was about 2001. Um, but this was about 98. Where at the mountains, we were praying youth fellowship. We were praying. And a lady was praying for her husband. Held the two waist. 
held her waist, both hands, and praying, praying. So I went to her and said, Uti beti o, uti. The way you are shaking your head, Uti no. So what makes you think, one shake Uti bebre a nyame kwa wonti, nyame ade na swensi sa. Is God, what is wrong with God? Are you, are you, are you serious? Now you are wondering, I, I, where do you want to go with this? So I should come and marry you and when we are praying? You want to head me down? You want to head past me or what? Paul said, that which you desire and want is not in the lengthy tongue talking. It's not you being baptized in Jordan or Kole. It has nothing. You can be baptized in Ordona. It won't change anything. He said, what will bring you the transformation you require is a changed mind. Because there is nothing more powerful than a changed mind. If you change your mind that you will be the head for your family, you will surely be the head for your family. If you change your mind that God will supply all your needs, then you are praying for lighter burdens. Stop praying. My burdens, my problems, does. If God exposes you to a lot of problems, you have to be thankful. It means God knows your capacity. So instead of praying for lighter burdens, pray for stronger shoulders. Look at somebody and tell the person what I just said. And be upstanding. Let's pray. Tell somebody instead of praying for lighter burdens, pray for stronger shoulders. Tell your neighbor, stop asking for lighter burdens. And start praying for stronger shoulders. Because you see, there is nothing expensive. It depends on your weight. You think something is expensive? People play with those numbers you are talking about. It's your weight. So life has weight issues. Because maybe, I mean, somebody that is traveling and they tell, um, um, okay, so you are going to London. Okay, London. Um, what day do you want to go? Okay, um, return date. Okay, um, economy is two thousand. Business is five. First class is ten. Then the person's the next question of the person: Will they all arrive at the same time? So if they will all arrive at the same time, he doesn't see why he should pay 10 or 5 if he can pay 2. Do you know why you are thinking like that? Wait. It's just wait. If you don't have weight, you can even calculate for your, for your mediocrity. If I even pay 2, I can save 3 and use it for shopping. So who told you that you can't fly, fly first class and still shop? You know why? Wait. Oh Lord, increase my weight. Oh Lord, increase my weight. Oh Lord, increase my weight. Because it's a weight issue. Look at somebody and say it's a weight issue. Because I know, I know somebody who said, ah, buffet in this place, they said 400 cities. Ha! Hey! Now Tomo 25 kilos. Buffet. I should do buffet one person, 400 cities. Now, now, me, 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 Tom, we show him how many weeks I made this. Wait, wait, it's, it's a purely weight issue. Well, for the almost six county, well, I got to go to more 400. Look at somebody and say it's a weight issue. Look for another and say, neighbor. It's purely a weight issue. 
me, you meet somebody who say, ah, oh, well, I mean, some of you at a point even said you will not buy a phone of a certain value. Do I have a witness here? By the time you realize you've bought it and you're looking for upgrade. Now, now you are not thinking like that anymore. After this iPhone, I bought your drink. Me parmente 20,000 CDs. And cut off phone. iPhone 40, 20 me. As I say, cry, he say. Onyango Tobia. Eh, I didn't say a come as wait look at somebody and say it's a weight issue no look for another and say it's a weight issue change your thinking change your mindset lift up your right hand father we come before your throne and we are only praying help us help us help us think right help us see right if we have lost ourselves Help us to come to ourselves and we will know what is your true riches. Holy Spirit of God. Let it be so. I want you to just lift your voice and pray. 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 Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. After conversation with your father. Thank you, Jesus. Come to yourself. Maybe you've strayed away from the faith. You are in church, but your heart is far. Lord, help me. Come to yourself. Maybe you need a rededication of your life to Christ. Come to yourself. Maybe you have joined yourself to citizens of other countries. And you are wasting every substance, your dignity, your integrity, the totality of your being. You are wasting everything through riotous living. Oh Lord, help us. Help us. Help us. dedicate our lives to you help us oh God to live lives that are pleasing to you we strayed but we know you will not cast us away so father we run to you again hold us close hold us close draw us to your side day by day help us to even love you more to dedicate ourselves more to you to push more for your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we thank you in Jesus name Amen you can put your hands together and prepare your offerings let's give Prepare your offerings. Heavenly Father, we pray and we lift up our offerings unto you. We pray that as 
we give let a good measure press down shake it together and being caused to run over be given unto us in jesus name amen at the direction of the ashes please drop your offerings if you came with a tithe or to redeem a pledge the weaknesses Please come forward and let's pray together. In me will be straight away by the power of your love. Holy Spirit of God. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Father, we pray 